Okay, so picking up right where we left off, in the last video we created the background, we created a custom skybox, and we used some particle systems to make stars and clouds. So now let's put in the playable character. So let's click on our witch object, and whenever you drag and drop a 2D image into the asset area of a 3D environment, it automatically turns it into a texture. So just go ahead and change that to sprite, Get rid of mint maps, click on apply, and now it's a sprite. We'll take that character, put her into the environment, just slide her over to the left, and let's click on the camera to see how that looks. That looks pretty good. We don't want her to be too close to the border. You can move her over just a touch if you want. So now we want to be able to move this character. So before we do, I want to show you what we're going to access. So if you go to Edit, and you go to Project Settings, and you go to Input, okay, if you've got a controller already plugged in, this is what you'll see. So if you've got a, a gamepad game controller already plugged in, if you notice, there isn't any reference to an actual analog stick. It doesn't say left analog stick or right analog stick. What you see is horizontal and vertical. That's important to know. Unity treats the analog stick as if it's actually two different controls. It looks at a vertical control, control and a horizontal control. So that's what our coding is going to look like. It's not going to say left analog stick equals such and such. It's actually going to just refer to vertical. So let's go ahead and do that. So to move the character around, we need a rigid body. So add physics, rigid body. Let's get rid of gravity. Right click, create. C sharp, and we'll call this which fly. We'll drag and drop which fly onto our character, and now we'll open up that script. Now I'll probably make a few versions of this, but uh, I want you to see how you basically come up with the basic control and then you build on it, you um, optimize the code. So if, we said we're looking for input. So if input, and we said it's an axis, so get axis. Which one? We said the name was vertical. Now the analog stick, by its nature, does not just return one or zero or negative one or zero. It has a range of numbers. It goes out like eight decimal points. So if you touch that control even just a little bit, it's returning a number like 0 0.001. So we want there to be a certain minimum uh, of, of dead zone where if you touch the control just a little bit, the character doesn't respond because we don't want it to be oversensitive. This is purely arbitrary. I'm going to use like 0.2. Obviously, if you make it uh, too great of a dead zone, then the character will feel sluggish. So this is really a game a game control. I won't quite call it a game balance issue, uh, but I guess you could put it in that range. It, it, you could consider it that if you want. So we're going to say 0.2. So obviously this is a, a positive. We're looking for it to be above 0.2, so you're moving up on the screen. So if, oops, sorry about that jump to the top of the screen accidentally. So if that vertical axis is returning a number greater than 0.2, we want something to happen. Well, we want a component to be modified. Which one? The rigid body. Okay, what attribute? Well, velocity. Velocity is a vector 3 because you're changing x, y, and z. We don't want it to change horizontally, so that's 0. We want it to change vertically. Again, this is game control, game balance issue. We're going to use three and see how that looks. And they're not moving into the depth of field, so zero. In addition to that, so else, we want to see if the character is going to be moving down. So if it's less than negative two, then it's going to move negative three. And then the very last thing we want to do so 
if you're not pressing up by a certain amount and you're not pressing down by a certain amount, then you really don't want it moving at all. And now that's why we had to put these else's in here is because we need them to be dependent on each other. So if you're pressing up, move up. If you're pressing down, move down. If you're not doing either, then come to a standstill. Now, if I didn't miss anything, if I didn't forget anything, that should do it. So we can move up, we can move down, but the problem is we can go all the way off the screen. So like I said, we are definitely gonna have to change that code. I just wanted you to see the basics. This is how you make the character move up and down based on the analog stick. Now let's go back to the script. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the position that the, the player character is in, and we're going to also check that. So right now we're just checking to see if the control is pressed. We're gonna to check to see if the control is pressed and something else. So add a parenthesis there, double ampersand, and we're gonna check transform dot position dot y. So in other words, what is the y position of the object the script is attached to? If it is greater, actually less than, sorry. If it is less than, let's try 5.5. So no longer is it just checking to see if you're pressing on the analog stick, it's also seeing if your character isn't greater than that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to here and we're going to check the opposite. We're gonna make sure that it's not too low. So we're going to say if it's greater than, and it needs to be, I believe, negative 3.5. Save that. So again, quick summary. First, we were just checking to see if the control is pressed. Now we're checking to see if the controller is pressed and if the position of the object the script is attached to uh, is within a certain range. And if you case, in case you're wondering why it's that Syntax transform.position.y is right here. The transform component position y. Save that. And now we run it. Press up. And she stops. Press down. She stops. Absolutely perfect. That easy. So now she can move up and down and she can stop. Uh, at the before she goes off the top and the bottom of the screen. So I'm thinking that's about it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to make, say, like a fireball or something like that, or an energy bolt, something that she can shoot. And then uh, we'll look at enemy formations and things like that. So for now, uh, you've added uh, character control based on the... Um, uh, using the analog stick as opposed to using keyboard. So that should about do it.